In lesson three, we'll be covering units and the concept of unit analysis. Now, you should have already read all of your textbook pages that correspond to this lesson, and you should have defined all of your terms. And now you should have a pencil and a piece of paper ready to take notes. I think it's a good idea that you have like a three ring binder that you put your notes in. And just try to be organized. Title this page that you're going to write notes on, title it Lesson 3 Units and Unit Analysis. And then just take good notes. Now most of the tables, if I have like a big table with a bunch of numbers and values, you don't have to write those tables down. Mainly when I give an explanation of an important concept, and especially any of the practice problems that I do, those are the things that you need to write down. One way to think about units is that they are letters that give meaning to a particular numerical value. This table that I have displayed is the basic units in the international system of units. Now this international system or SI system of units, SI just stands for system international. These are the basic units that scientists all around the world use to help them describe a particular quantity. For example, the basic SI unit for measuring length is a meter and the symbol used for that is just a lowercase m. Now let's just think about how units help us. For example, if I said that the distance from my house to the grocery store was six, you'd be like, well, six what? Six miles, six kilometers, six meters. What units are you using with that measurement? Units give meaning to a particular numerical value. Now, within the SI system of units, we have prefixes that will go along with each of those units, and those help us describe different quantities. For example, the basic SI units, they don't have any prefix that goes in front of them, like for length. Meters doesn't have a prefix in front of it. But if we wanted to talk about one one hundredth of a meter, we can put the prefix centi in front of meter, and that means that we would say centimeter, and the abbreviation we use is a C. And so look back at this basic units table. That's how we would write it up there. I put that C, that yellow C in front of M. That's how we would say or write centimeters. We'd write it CM. And so if I had made a measurement that was 10 centimeters long, I could just say 10 centimeters or 10 hundredths of a meter. And so back at the metric prefixes table, if we start at the top there with a megameter, that means one million times a meter. So some, if we had something that was six megameters long, it would be six million meters long. Something that was six thousand kilometers, well, a kilometer is one thousand times the basic unit. So if you had six thousand kilometers, that would be like six thousand times a thousand, or six million meters. Now our table, the maximum prefix that we have is a megameter. That means 1,000 times the basic unit. The smallest one we have on this table is a micrometer, and we use that Greek symbol that's called a mu symbol. It's like spelled M-U if you're going to spell it. Mu, the Greek letter mu stands for micrometer, and that's one one millionth of the basic unit. Now, of course, there's prefixes that are greater than and less than the prefixes on this table. For example, a nanometer, that would be one billionth of the basic unit. A gigameter, that would be one billion times the basic unit. Or for a gigameter, it would be one billion times a meter. Now maybe you've heard of that word giga when you're talking about a computer. Maybe you've heard of my computer has 20 gigabytes of memory. That would just mean that you had 20 billion bytes of memory. So we use these metric prefixes in front of all of the different SI basic units. So you can have such things as a kilosecond or a gigamole, things like that. Now in America, we also use English units. We don't always use system international units for our units of measure. So I think it's important to know some of the English units and then how to convert from English units to system international or metric units. So look at this table here. I'm sure you're probably familiar with some of these 
equivalent measures here. Like you probably know that there's 12 inches in one foot, three feet in a yard, 5,280 feet in a mile. Now the standard way that people convert from English to metric units or vice versa is that conversion there, that equivalent, 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. And then some other ones there, 10 millimeters equals one centimeter, 100 centimeters is equal to a meter, 1,000 meters equals one kilometer, and 1.61 kilometers is about equal to one mile. Now the ones with decimal places, 2.54 centimeters and 1.61 kilometers, I've rounded those to two decimal places. Those values actually have more than just two decimal places, but for simplification, I just have two decimal places there. And then I also have some equivalent measures for mass and weight. And all of these are in your Lesson 3 assignment. They're at the end of your Lesson 3 assignment. So if you haven't printed out your Lesson 3 assignment, go ahead and do that now. And what I suggested that you do is print this table of equivalent measures. I've given you all of these, the mass and weight, the volume, and the length tables. They're all on one page. And you can cut that out and tape, tape it to the inside cover of your textbook. Keep it somewhere that you can refer to it and that you know where it is. Well, now let's talk about how knowing about different equivalent measures, how that can help you and what its purpose is in science. Knowing your SI basic units, your metric prefixes, and the equivalent measures, that will help you in a process called unit analysis. Well, to start, let's just think of an example. Let's say that we wanted to convert six feet into inches. and Let's just talk about six feet. Now, to convert that to inches, you might already know, well, that would be 72 inches. But there's a mathematical way we can represent that, and we can use an equivalent measure to convert it from feet to inches. And we know that there are 12 inches in one foot, and we can write that as a fraction. 12 inches over one foot. Now the thing to understand here is that that fraction is actually equal to one. Just think about it, 12 inches is equal to one foot. If I had two values, let's say five over five, those were equal to each other, five is equal to five, and I wrote that as a fraction, I know that that fraction equals one. So in the same way, 12 inches over one foot, that's also equal to one. And so what I can do, is I can take six feet and I can multiply it by that fraction, 12 inches over one foot. And then the feet units cancel because I have feet over feet. And when we do unit analysis, we think of those units just like we do numbers. For example, if I had this relationship here, six times two over five times two, I know that I could cancel the twos there. The reason I can is because two over two just equals one, and any number times one is equal to that number. So in the same way, I canceled feet over feet because that just equals one. And so I'm left with six times 12. You just multiply the number parts together, and you're left with inches for units. 72 inches would be the answer. So equivalent measures, whether they're equivalent measures for length, for volume, for pressure, for time, it doesn't matter what it is, we can write those equivalent measures as a fraction and we can use them in unit analysis problems to convert from one type of unit to another. And anytime we have an equivalent measure, it doesn't matter which way we write that fraction. I could write it 12 inches over one foot or I could also write that one foot over 12 inches. That ratio or that fraction still equals one. It doesn't matter which way I write that. However, if I was trying to convert from feet to inches, I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't say six feet times one foot over 12 inches. The goal when you do unit analysis is to try to get the units to cancel. But see, now I have 
feet times feet instead of feet divided by feet, which would cancel. So that would not be an appropriate use of an equivalent measure in unit analysis. Now, why would we want to convert from one unit to another? Well, maybe you had some English units and you wanted to convert them over to the international system. That would be one use of it. Or maybe you had some values that were in seconds and it would be more convenient to work with those in hours. So you converted from seconds to hours. Or maybe you were just curious. Maybe you're six feet tall and you want to know how tall you were in inches. And so you could use unit analysis to figure out what your height was in inches. Let's go ahead and do some practice problems. In practice problem A, I want you to convert 20 meters to decimeters. Well, why don't we first go back and look at our table of prefixes. That will help us figure out what kind of a conversion factor to use or unit multiplier to use. And so we see here that lowercase d, that is the prefix for deci or deca. And that's equal to one-tenth of the basic unit. So if we're doing length right now, a decimeter would be one-tenth of a meter. So the best way to write this would be 10 decimeters is equal to one meter, or just say 10 decimeters over one meter. That's better than writing one-tenth of a meter per decimeter. It's better to work with whole numbers, so that's what we're doing here. Ten decimeters in one meter. Now, anytime you do a conversion from one unit to another, the first thing you should do is write down the unit that was given, and that was 20 meters. And then we figured out what our unit multiplier is, 10 decimeters over a meter, and we just need to think, is that the way we want to write it? Do we want to write it 10 decimeters over a meter or 1 meter over 10 decimeters? Well, we want our meters to cancel, so we need to write it 10 decimeters over 1 meter. And so the meters units cancel, and we're left with 20 times 10 would just be 200 decimeters, dm. And that's our answer. Let's do another one. This one deals with converting from one unit of area to another one. And I have 30 centimeters squared. I want you to convert 30 centimeters squared to millimeters squared. And so what you should do first is write down what's been given, 30 centimeters squared. And then second step should be to figure out what conversion factor that you need to use, or unit multiplier. The, that, that phrase means I'm talking about the same thing, unit multiplier or conversion factor. I'm talking about writing an equivalent measure as a fraction. Well, maybe you know that there are 10 millimeters in one centimeter. So one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters, or one centimeter over 10 millimeters. That ratio will equal one. Now, let's just think about it. We need to multiply to get rid of centimeters and convert to millimeters. So we know that centimeters has to cancel. So we'll say 10 millimeters over 1 centimeter. Remember, equivalent measures, the way we write that ratio, it doesn't matter which way we do it because it still equals 1. We just have to write it so that our units cancel. Now, those units, you work with them just like you do the numerical values. And so let's just think about this. Centimeters squared, let me write that over here to the side. That means centimeters times centimeters. Just like if I had 2 squared, that means 2 times 2. So here I've got 30 centimeters squared times 10 millimeters over centimeters. And this centimeters squared, we can just think of that as centimeters times centimeters. So really all I've done is cancel one of those centimeters. That means I need to multiply by another unit multiplier of 10 millimeters over one centimeter. The same thing. I'm multiplying by the same thing. I just cancel the centimeters now. I've canceled both centimeters and see now I have millimeters times millimeters or millimeters squared for the units. And so that would be 30 times 10 times 10, or 3,000 
millimeters squared. And that's the answer. So when you're converting units that are in area, units of area, you have to multiply by the same unit multiplier two times. Let's do another one. Let's convert 150 cubic centimeters to cubic meters. This one is a volume conversion. We're converting from one volume to another. And so the first thing we do, this is always what you do when you're doing a unit multiplier problem. The first thing is to write down what's been given, 150 centimeters cubed. Then you think about what unit multiplier you can use to convert from centimeters to meters. And maybe you already know that there's 100 centimeters in one meter. That conversion is on that equivalent measures for length table that I gave you. We're trying to get rid of the centimeter. So that means we need that in the denominator or bottom of the fraction. And so we write one meter over 100 centimeters. Now, we're doing volume here, so just like on area, we need to multiply by the same unit multiplier two times to cancel all of the units. Here we would need to multiply by the same unit multiplier three times to get rid of centimeters cubed, because that's centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. If you want to, if you want to try to figure out the answer to this one on your own, go ahead and pause the CD and work it out, and then you can fast forward and see if you got the answer right. So what you would do is you'd need two more unit multipliers, the same one, one meter over 100 centimeters. And so now you've got centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. That will cancel that centimeters cubed. And you end up with 150 times 1 times 1 times 1, or just 150 meters cubed over 100 times 100 times 100. And so that's really 150 over 1 million. And so if you want to, you can get your calculator out and just do 150 divided by 1 million, and that will equal 0 0.00015. And don't just write it like that. Make sure and keep your units, meters cubed. Write your units down. Now, on problems that you do in this course, whenever you have a calculation that you have to do that requires units, I think that half of your credit for the answer should be getting the units right, and the other half of your credit should be getting the numerical part of the answer right. If you get the units right and the numerical part wrong, you get half credit. If you get the numerical part right and the units wrong, you still get half credit. The units are just as important as the numerical part. Now let's do one more problem. This one we're going to convert from metric units to English units. We're going to convert 60 centimeters to feet. Our first step, as always, is to write down what's given. 60 centimeters. And then let's think about what we need to do to convert to feet. Well, we know that that unit from converting to English or to metric or vice versa, we know that 2.54 centimeters is equal to one inch. So we could convert from centimeters to inches but then we need units of feet, so we need to convert from inches to feet. And that means we need two different unit multipliers to do this conversion. So let's go ahead and do that. Our first one will go from metric to English. So that means that the English units need to be on top, one inch over 2.54 centimeters. And then we need to multiply this. Well, actually, we can go ahead and cancel our units just so we see that we've canceled centimeters. Now, we want feet for our units. And so, notice how the unit we want always ends up on the top of the last unit multiplier there. And so, we say one foot over 12 inches. Those inches cancel, and we've got feet for our units left. Now, we will do the multiplication here of the numbers in the numerator, 60 times 1 times 1 is 60 feet divided by 2.54 times 12. And 
and I'm running out of room over here on the right side so I'll move back over here to the left to simplify this some more we'll have 60 just looking at the number 60 over 30.48 and then if we simplify that we'd get a really long decimal number 1.968503 and so on what I want you to do on problems like this when you have a lot of decimals is just round them to two decimal places so try to remember that any problems that you do that deal with decimal places just round them to two decimal places round those answers and so this one would round to 1.97 and then don't forget the units feet 60 centimeters is equal to 1.97 feet anytime you do a unit analysis problem where you're converting from one unit to another you write down the unit that's been given first then you decide what unit multiplier or like in this problem unit multipliers to use multiply by those units and make sure your units cancel then simplify your numerical answer now just real quick let me show you one other type of equivalent measure relationship and in temperature you don't really have like a ratio that you can write it's more of a mathematical formula for example look at K that stands for Kelvins that's one of the SI basic units and if you wanted to convert from degrees Celsius into Kelvins you just add that 273 to the degrees Celsius so like if you had 20 degrees Celsius that would be 273 plus 20 is 293 Kelvins so not all equivalent measures are just one numerical value with its units equal to another numerical value like for temperature you actually have a math formula that you use to convert from Fahrenheit to Celsius and Kelvins to Celsius okay well now you're ready for your review questions so why don't you go ahead and pause the CD complete all of your review questions and then turn the CD back on and I'll show you what the solutions were to each one In problem one you needed to multiply 600 meters by one decameter over 10 meters now of course you could have said one tenth of a decameter per meter you could have made that your unit multiplier as well but it's just easier to work with whole numbers on these so I said one decameter is equal to 10 meters and so those meters units cancel and you're left with 60 dkm or deca meters in problem two you were to convert three miles to feet and so you see here that we have a unit multiplier of 5280 feet per mile and so the miles units cancel and you're left with 15,840 feet in problem three you needed to convert 600 kilograms to grams and you needed one unit multiplier 1000 grams per kilogram to do that so the kilograms cancel and you're left with 600,000 grams. Now problem four was a little bit trickier. You had to convert 40 centimeters to micrometers. Now you could have converted directly from centimeters to micrometers, but I like to just use unit multipliers that refer back to your basic SI unit of meters. And so I used two unit multipliers to do this problem. First, I converted from centimeters to meters, and so my centimeters cancel. Then I converted from meters to micrometers, because I could just look at that table of prefixes and know right away that one million micrometers equaled one meter. And so the result was 400,000 micrometers. Now there's more than one way to do some of these unit multiplier problems. If you did not do it this way, but you got that answer, 400,000 micrometers, then that's fine. Problem five was an area conversion, so that means you needed to use the same unit multiplier twice, 100 centimeters per meter, to convert from meter squared to centimeter squared. And so you make sure all of your meters units cancel there, and you had meters times meters in the denominator, and that gives you 600,000 centimeters squared. In problem six, that was a volume conversion and you multiply by the same unit multiplier three times. A simplified way of doing that is just to say 100 centimeters per meter 
cubed. See how I have that 3 there? Just like meters cubed means meters times meters times meters. 100 centimeters over 1 meter cubed means you're taking that unit multiplier and multiplying it out 3 times. And so you know that meters cubed over meters cubed, that cancels, and you're left with 60 million cubic centimeters for the result. There are 60 million cubic centimeters in 60 cubic meters. In problem 7, you needed two unit multipliers, one to convert grams to kilograms, and the other to convert kilograms to pounds. And so your grams cancel there, your kilograms here, and you're left with 6.6 .6 pounds. Problem 8 required two unit multipliers as well, converting from inches to centimeters. So those inch units cancel, and then centimeters to meters. There the centimeters cancel, and you're left with 508 meters. In problem 9, you needed to convert 20 degrees Celsius to Fahrenheit. Now this kind of problem, you don't use unit multipliers. You use the formula for converting Fahrenheit to Celsius or vice versa. Fahrenheit is equal to 1.8 Celsius plus 32. And so what you do is you just substitute 20 degrees Celsius in for the C in 1.8 times C and you'll have F is equal to 1.8 times 20 plus 32 and that would equal 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't forget your units on those problems. Now I would do those problems just like I did it there. Write the formula down first and use that as a pattern. That formula helps you think about what your next step is. So you write the formula down. Your next step is to substitute the value that you've been given, 20 degrees Celsius, into the right place and then do your math to figure out what degrees Fahrenheit equals. In the last problem, you needed three unit multipliers to convert from days to seconds. It's 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. That gives you 86,400 seconds in a day. And that's kind of interesting to think about that there's 86,400 seconds in one day. As a Christian, you should make every one of those seconds count. Try to make sure that everything that you're doing in every single one of those seconds is going to glorify God. Well, that's all for Lesson 3. There were a lot of unit analysis problems there that I wanted you to do, but I want you to be good at these because being good at unit analysis makes you good at understanding science.